Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. Today I want to give you guys an artifact video where I go over the basic mechanics in the game. So whenever you guys watch some artifact content that's coming out here and there, the game's not quite released, I can't stream it for you guys, I can't play my own game to show you guys quite yet, but there is some stuff out there and people are pretty hyped and well, it can be overwhelming to understand what's going on when you watch artifact. Now, when I played artifact for the first time, even though I managed to lose my first couple of games against the bot, I, I got the game right away. It's a game that through experience, especially if you're an experienced gamer, an ex experienced card gamer like myself, you're gonna get it, all right? It's not that difficult when you're playing it, but if you haven't if you haven't played it and you're watching it, it you know, do you really know the stuff that's going on? It's, it can be pretty tricky. I saw the, the stream from PAX. Um, I saw a few other videos that were going over some of the strategy. And again, it was just very overwhelming to understand everything. So today I'm gonna give you guys the basics of it from my experience, and it is from experience in the closed beta. So things can obviously change, but this should give you a very good idea about what's going on when you see someone play Artifact. So in Artifact, it tries to emulate the experience that Dota, the MOBA, has people play. You're basically playing a card game MOBA. You know, Dota is based on, you know, Warcraft 3 even. It was it was a mod in Warcraft 3, and then Dota 2 became a massive, massive game uh, in the MOBA community. And now they have Artifact, which is a game that tries to um, showcase a card game within the MOBA environment. You see three uh, boards at the same time and you immediately you're like oh my god are you really playing three games at the same time well in some aspects you are but when you break down the game to its smaller elements it's actually not that difficult to understand the reason there's three boards is because it emulates the MOBA experience there's basically three lanes in the game that you're playing and while the lanes are largely separate they're not entirely separate there are things that can be used in one lane to manipulate what happens in another lane. Now, uh, the lane system is very interesting. Uh, each lane has uh, each player's tower, and when two towers are killed in any four more stage that player wins. That's your goal. Your goal is to eliminate two towers from your opponent. You start off with one in each lane and the tower that you start off with is a fairly weak tower so it's pretty important to hold your defense and to snipe those weaker towers your opponent does not defend very well. When you kill the first tower the follow-up tower that respawns is one with much higher health so in my experience it was quite difficult to really completely stack up a lane to double kill a tower. Most of my games went the way of winning two of my lanes, essentially. And to do that, well, there's some interesting things that happen. Um, the uh, interesting concept in, in the lane system is that the mana, what you use to actually play cards, well, that is individual to each lane. So you want to actually have uh, the ability to play stuff in each lane because each lane has a separate mana pool for your cards. So how do you do that? This is where we get into the fun part. We go into the cards of artifact. Now, there's a few other card types, you know, that modify like the, the, the tower that you're, you're defending on, on a specific lane. But these are the basic ones. These are the ones that you almost always see play every single turn, often multiple times. So first off, we have the hero card. Yes, so each deck has five five hero cards and you don't start with all of them in play, you start with a few and in the, in the second round uh, more come into the field. Now uh, the field, there's different positions on each lane and these positions are randomized each time there is a round. So sometimes you'll have your hero facing off against some weaker guy or your hero facing off a much stronger hero and you might be in a disadvantaged position. So there is some randomness to it. It will allow you to beat stronger players if you are lucky enough, just as all card games are these days. Now, um, what makes heroes very interesting is that when they die, they're just out of the game, you know, for 
the rest of that turn and the next turn. But two turns later, they come back and you get to choose to put them in a different lane if you want. So you're able to kind of concede a lane and maybe really push for a different one two turns later. And you know, there's a lot of strategy that goes into that. There'll obviously be a lot more artifact content once I can play the game for you guys to demonstrate this stuff. But hero cards. Yes, hero cards. This is Axe. Um, Axe is a red hero. There are four colors. There's red, black, uh, green, and blue. And the colors are important because you need a hero in a specific lane to use spells of that color. So if you have Axe in one lane and no other hero in that lane, you can only use the mana of that lane to play red cards, red spells, okay? And, you know, red creep, as you'll see in a second what a what a card like that is. So if you, if you have a hand that has only one red thing and like the rest of it is blue cards, when it's your turn to take action in the lane where you only have axe, well, you can only utilize mana to, you know, play that one red card in that instance. So uh, in my experience, it's very important to have heroes alive in each lane unless you're doing some kind of crazy strategy or probably about to lose if you're if you have unutilized mana if you have situations your opponent is just doing massive damage to your tower you are in serious trouble you have more lanes and there uh, you have more heroes than there are lanes to try to cycle this aspect and you know if you get a bunch of your heroes sniped all at once well you're going to be in serious trouble now heroes at the start of the game they're actually very weak units you start off with three mana so there's not too many cards that people can use to uh, change the state of the game at, at the very start of the game most of the time and some heroes have stronger base stats than others and obviously that often has to do with the color so the red heroes are generally very high stats axe here has seven attack two armor and 11 health the armor basically reduces incoming damage by that amount the health is the total amount that he needs to go until he dies but when he dies the condemned state he doesn't He's not removed from the game, he comes back two turns later. So um, this aspect of coming constantly back into the game um, is a very interesting one. You can see those three slots above his uh, portrait there. One has like the X and one has like a shield, one has a heart. You can have your heroes equipped with items and some of these items can be very powerful and they enhance the stats below them. So you can enhance the attack with one item. You can't have two attack modifying items. You can only have one. You can replace the previous one if you want. Generally not the best idea to do that, but you can. Uh, and the same with armor. You can modify the armor with an armor item. You can modify the health with a health item. So let's take a look at uh, the item card. So this is a fur lined mantle. It's a very simplistic card and equipped hero has plus eight health. So this item card, it just stays with the hero. So Axe, he goes to 19 total health. When you play this, it essentially heals him for eight, essentially. And if he dies and comes back, he comes back um, not with 11 health, he comes back with 19 health. So what happens is, as the game progresses, you get one extra mana each follow-up turn. So you start with three, you got four, five, six, seven. And not only that, your heroes are constantly getting stronger as you equip them with more and more items because you can never really fully get rid of the heroes. They just keep coming back. So it's very important that they're around and it's very important that you're upgrading them with the proper equipment. So how do you get a card like Fur Lined Mantle? So there is the mana system that is basically attributed to each lane. And there is also the item system that uses gold. So um, you obtain more and more gold as you kill things. If at any time you kill an opponent's hero, you get five gold per kill. And if at any time you kill an opponent's creep, so kind of like a minion lesser being type of dude, you get one gold for each of those kills. And at the end of each round, you, you're brought up with kind of like the, the shop menu. And this is where you buy items. This is where you buy uh, potions, which are kind of like spells without costs. They don't cost mana and they don't require that you have uh, a hero in that lane, for instance. And this is where you essentially improve the strength of your reoccurring heroes that constantly come back into the game.
The other type of card is, as you imagine, it is a card game. There are spell cards. You pay X amount of mana and do this. Um, in this case, I want to do a uh, first never before seen card reveal. Thank you very much, Valve and Artifact. Spring the Trap. And this is a seven cost card. So this, this takes quite a few turns for you to actually be able to play it. You need a red hero in play on the lane where you can use this mana, and it summons two centaur hunters in any lane. So this aspect is extremely powerful. Um, you're able to use the mana in one lane to modify the options in your other lanes. So if you've already like won basically one of the lanes, because let's say you have maybe overwhelmingly powerful heroes, you can seriously support the, the lanes that you're about to lose or very marginal by utilizing the mana of one lane into another. So the aspect of conceding one lane and trying to push another isn't as straightforward. And that's what I think is going to appeal to a lot of people. There is a lot of back and forth counterplay in Artifact. So what is a Centaur Hunter? And this is where we can show off the Creep card. This is a Centaur Hunter. You get two of these by casting the Spring the Trap card. Centaur Hunter does four damage, has no armor, and has eight health. So that's how you see a card like this. This is a notably strong creep from what I've seen. Um, as the game unfolds, creeps are automatically spawn onto the board, but they are generally very weak cards. They're basically just, you know, ping there, do a little bit of damage. If you manage to get just a few armor on some of your heroes, most of the creep that automatically spawns is going to do just no damage to your heroes. So Center Hunter is different. It has quite high stats um, and yeah I think does a very good job of absorbing damage and possibly even dealing some damage so that's kind of how it works you start off with heroes you want to keep your heroes alive you want to pump out your heroes maybe sacrifice them at specific points in the game because they're gonna come back like two turns later anyway further equip them with better items try to stack and manipulate the different lanes to a point where it might maybe you're conceding one pushing into another or maybe you're faking a concede, then using the mana in other lanes to boost that lane instantaneously on a surprise turn. There's a lot of gameplay that is a lot of play and counterplay, and I think you guys are going to love it. It's not a game that is um, easy to, to, to watch if you've never played it before, so be patient on that end. And yeah, let's see how it works out. If you guys like this video, if you guys want to see more artifact content from me, why don't you go ahead and smash that like button because well why not i don't i don't know what what else to really gauge your entertainment levels of there's a lot of hype that goes around when you know new games are coming out and with a company as big as valve there's obviously a lot of hype for this game as well um, i genuinely think it's a very good game from what i've seen and what i've played so far but yes it is an overwhelming experience to watch especially if you've never seen it before and i've hope that I've remedied that problem at least a little bit. Let me know what you think, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.